All right, thank, uh, thank you all for coming out today. We appreciate uh, you, you doing so and, and the interest in the program, obviously. Um, as you all saw last night, we put out a, a release that uh, head baseball coach Chad Holbrook had, had resigned his position. Athletics Director Ray Tanner is here today, obviously, to talk about that and to talk about the future of Gamecock baseball. Uh, format for today, Coach Tanner will have some opening remarks, then we'll open up for questions. We have some uh, field mics, uh, so please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you and, and ask to use the microphone. Uh, we would ask the, that you ask all your questions while Coach Tanner is up here at the podium, because once he leaves the podium, he will not be available again. I don't expect him to talk again until we have an announcement on a new baseball coach. So, so please ask your questions while he is up here at the podium. With that, um, Athletics Director Ray Tanner. Thank you, Steve. Before I begin, I do want to take a moment to speak to Chad Holbrook and his time here at the University of South Carolina. Nine years ago, he joined forces with our staff. We had a tremendous amount of success, and we had a lot of fun along the way. He was instrumental in the role that he assumed, and we are personal friends. And I'm, I'm, I wanted to make mention of the way he has handled himself with tremendous integrity and character during his entire time here. I'm very grateful for that and, and, and excited about the impact that he did make here and all the, all the positive things that he brought to this program. Uh, moving forward, Jerry Myers will assume the role right now as an interim head coach. Our staff is still intact. We um, are working on a recruiting class that obviously has concern at this time. And our current players, contact was made with them today and last night. And we'll continue to move forward in that capacity until a head coach is named. Um, I know that I'll be asked about a timeline. There isn't a set timeline. I understand that there's a lot of activity in the summer with the amateur play that happens around the country and the recruiting that goes on. Ideally, we would like to move sooner than later. Uh, but potential candidates, in many cases, are involved with their current teams. So that, that um, is a concern as well. That being said, I'll be glad to answer some questions. Bill, questions? Microphone to you, David, with the first one. Ray, when you spoke with Chad, what were those conversations like? Did you go in with an a, a end result in your head, or, or was it still undetermined what your decision would be? Well. We're here to talk about the future of the program. I, I think last night it was well stated in the release uh, that he made a decision to resign. I'll tell you that what you have read already, that there's been an assessment of the program over the last few weeks. And, and last night, uh, Coach Holbrook resigned to pursue other opportunities. Just as a follow-up to that, did he have any option for staying in your conversations with him? Did you give him the option of staying and continuing as a head coach in any form moving forward? Uh, that, that's a, you're giving me a hypothetical situation. I think you can refer back to the release. What's your thought on the cliche, I guess, for lack of a better word, that it's tough to follow somebody who's had success, it's tough to follow a legend? What, what's your belief about that and from watching Chad try to do it what are your thoughts on that well I, I you know most of the time you know I hear that and I kind of laugh about it you know I came here many years ago with the legacy that Bobby Richardson Bobby Richardson had and then the tenure that June Raines had and the success the tradition the history of this program uh, I don't think much about that what I think about this program it is a great opportunity it has tradition, as I mentioned, has great history. We have a wonderful fan base. We have great opportunities here to be successful. And that has been realized. And hopefully it will be certainly going forward. Coach Tanner, what are you looking for in a baseball coach to lead this program? Maybe to follow up what I just said. You know, a coach that is much like the ones that have been here in the past, uh, coaches that embrace this tradition, embrace our fan base, embrace the expectations. 
uh, em embrace a wonderful atmosphere here at Founders Park with opportunities galore to compete at a high level. And you always hear people talk about the cliche of someone who fits. And uh, I think that that can be used broadly, but someone that understands our culture and maybe has experienced it in one way or another, being in the, this region or in the Southeast. That's not to say that we're limited uh, by, by the geography, but um, someone that certainly understands what Carolina baseball and the brand is about. There have been a lot of uh, big baseball salary increases here for head coaches. Do you have a, a number that you're comfortable with, or is there, are there financial restrictions when it comes to hiring a, a head baseball coach here? I wish I had started coaching uh, at, at a time that it, it, it is like it is today. But it is you know, very impressive that the salaries that are throughout the country in collegiate baseball. But uh, no, the, we're, we're going to be in the marketplace you know, for, the, for a head coach. And I'm not going to stand here and tell you that it's unlimited, but we'll, we'll certainly be competitive in the marketplace. Coach, you've been in situations as a baseball coach um, where you've had things not go your way in a game of baseball, injuries happen, those kinds of things. Um, you having been in that position before, what sort of sympathy did you have for what has happened here over the last couple of years? Well, I, I, maybe I don't know exactly what your question is, but I'll speak, I'll speak to the season uh, with the expectations that we had with a, a really good team. And it was decimated with some injuries, very untimely. And it, it, did, play, it did play a role in our season, in my mind, not making excuses in any way, because our players and Coach Holbrook would not want me to do that. Uh, but it does, it does take a toll on you. And, and it put us in a position maybe that we didn't, didn't have the personnel uh, throughout the year that we anticipated that we would have. So the challenges were greater. Ray, how difficult personally has this been to go through and how long will it take to kind of put that aside and focus on what you have to do next? It's, it's difficult. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend that, that it's not. I, I love what I do. I've had 21 years at this university. I cherish that. I don't take it for granted. I took this job knowing that there were going to be some tough days and, and certainly the last few hours have been difficult, uh, but it would be difficult under any circumstances when you have a colleague, a coach in any sport that's no longer with you because uh, it is a lifestyle. It's a family. You're together a lot. You have a lot of dialogue, and it's uh, it's not an easy it's not an easy situation to go through. But I do understand that it it's part of the job. I I was. Um, very flattered last night when some colleagues as athletic directors reached out to me to share some of their experiences. That meant a lot to me. Reggie. Going forward, looking for a new coach, your background, how unique is that in your position as opposed to some ADs who haven't been in the dugout? Well, we will not be hiring a search firm. So I think that, you know, I haven't lost the connections maybe that I've had over the years and being part of the NCAA selection committee has enhanced that in a lot of ways. I did have a, a lot of coaches and some athletic directors call me throughout the season telling me how good their teams were as we were starting to pick the teams. But uh, I feel like that, you know, that is a little bit of an advantage, you know, with, with the relationships that I have created over the years as we pursue hiring a new coach um, as soon as possible. Uh, can, can you foresee a situation where uh, Coach Esposito and Coach Myers are, are on the next staff, and, and what have those two kind of meant to this program? Well, they've, they've meant a tremendous amount to our program. You know, Coach Myers and I had – we served two stints together, if you will, and then Coach Esposito and I go back a long ways, and, you know, they're continuing. They're working, they're working right now. Uh, I, I didn't tell Coach Holbrook who to hire. I don't get involved in – head coaches making decisions about their staff. Occasionally, a coach will ask me. I may give my opinion, but it's just an opinion. It's certainly not a directive. I think I, I'm on record saying that I don't get involved in those things. So 
uh, whoever we hire going forward certainly has the autonomy to, to hire his own staff. Uh, two quick questions for you. In talking with Chad after the season, he didn't sound like anybody who was interested in resigning. And in fact, he'd been on the road recruiting up until you guys started meeting. Can, can you tell us what he said to you about why he is resigning from this job? Uh, again, you, you know, you're, you're going back to a situation that has passed us. And I'm not, I'm not going to address that question. But, I mean, you can't clarify firing versus resignation just to we put out we put out a release last night that he resigned. I think that that says says what it needs to say. Yeah. And the other question is, in today's major college baseball world, it's like if a team misses the tournament, you know, fans are getting upset and and they're calling for coaches to be fired. Is is that the new norm as you see it uh, moving forward? I mean, do you look at the South Carolina program as a program that should make the NCAA tournament every season? Well, it's interesting. You know, I think that many of you in this room, you go back in time, uh, college baseball programs didn't get their scores in the newspaper. You, um, you never got mentioned on the 11 o'clock news about what your score was, and, and now that has changed. I think the emphasis throughout the country in college baseball from athletic directors and presidents are at, at a place that's never been before, the attention is great. A lot of programs have expectations of playing in the postseason. I, I will tell you this, I've said it many times, I embrace that. Our fan base is tremendous. We've got a beautiful place to play. And uh, I coach for a long time. I don't think um, expectations are always met, but I don't think you're a failure if you don't meet maybe the fans' expectations. We, we strive for to be in the postseason with all of our sports. One thing that that was important to me when I became the athletics director that we're going we're gonna to add beach volleyball. Are we going to do it at a level that we can get to the postseason? Are we going to do the things we need to do in all of our sports? And we have tried to do that. We've had some success doing that. And um, maybe sometimes it's, it's unfair. But I think it is part of the conversation that we're, we're all trying to get to the postseason. It doesn't matter what sport it is that you're, you're trying to get an opportunity to play at the end of the year. With the draft being less a week away, what's kind of the message to signees who are, who are going through that process right now? Well, I met with the assistant coaches last night, and we, we talked about it and um, shared some information. I shared some of my opinions, and certainly their professionals, they're in it every single day. And the idea is the draft is going to happen. And, you know, sometimes kids come, they go, they stay. Um, we would like for them to have an opportunity if, if the timeline works before they make a decision whether they become a professional or not is to visit with a new head coach. And, and hopefully uh, that can work out. I, I can't stand here and tell you that it'll be a perfect scenario, but that would, would be my wish that if we have a, a young person that's considered an opportunity to bypass school that they visit with our, with our new head coach when that time comes. Ray, will Chad be paid for the final two years on his contract? Can't speak to that in official capacity today. It was a negotiated settlement, and um, it has not been fully executed at this point. Ray, as you conduct your search, are you going to be looking primarily at um, head coaches at Power Five schools, someone who's been to the College World Series, and also um, you you already addressed it somewhat, just how challenging this whole the past two weeks have been. Is it? the most challenging thing you've been through, uh, especially since you became a head coach yourself at NC State? Well, to answer your, your first part of your question is, I, I'm not in a situation that we're going to go try to hire a head coach that's made three appearances in the College World Series or, or an assistant coach who hasn't been there. there I, I don't have any guidelines at this point. Uh, certainly, uh, experience is, is important, but there are a lot of assistant coaches that have become very successful head coaches. As a matter of fact, uh, some schools in our league have recently hired assistant coaches. And probably in the last two or three years, they've all been assistant coaches. Uh, that's not to say that's the route I will take or will not take. Uh, but, um, you know, one thing that's important to me is to, to visit with a, a candidate that, that understands who we are at the university. And maybe that's not easy in a short period of time. But um, we've got a lot of things here to be excited about in our baseball program. And, 
and I, I think that we'll have some opportunities. It is a, an outstanding program, and, and I'm looking forward to, as I move tonight and in the next few days and, and visiting with some people and sharing information about uh, our Gamecock baseball program. Uh, the second part of your question is about the difficulty. Uh, it's difficult. It, it's difficult, but uh, I'm not, it's not, it's not about me. It's about the program. It's about, you know, what my responsibilities are as director of athletics. And it's that we have lots of challenges and we also have wonderful opportunities. And that's, that's the way I see it. But there's numerous times where the conversations are not pleasant. I think that, um, or enjoyable, and, uh, but it, it, goes, it goes with the territory and, and, and um, it's, a wonderful, it's a wonderful position that I'm in and I'm grateful to be in it. Um, some days are more difficult than others. Ray, Chad faced an awful lot of criticism this year from fans, particularly on social media. Is that fair or not fair? And, and did that play into Chad's decision? Well, it didn't play. It didn't play into any any of our conversations or uh, in the assessment. And I, I will have to confess that you guys are the experts in social media and Facebook and Twitter. I'm not. I'm I'm pretty good at uh, the highway, 56 XM, and that's uh, that's about my experience. I and, and I'm very serious about that. So. Uh, you know, you, I, get, I get some letters, I get some correspondence, I get a lot of positive ones as well. I, I, you know, I, I know we're talking about moving forward, but I know that during Chad Holbrook's time here, not his last five years, but all nine of his years, he did things the right way with character and integrity. And uh, I used to share with my players, you know, sometimes when we got criticized um, and they don't like it too much. Uh, it's really a compliment turned inside out. People care. We want them to care. We want them to come to the games. It's part of it. Coaches understand that, and players understand it as well. I know it's early in this process, but did Chad give you an indication, or do you have any gut feeling about how soon he'll get back in the coaching game? Do you think he might take a year off? I mean, what, do you, what do you think his plans are, if you know? I, I do not know, and uh, I, it probably would be unfair for me to address it. I, I will tell you this, that there's going to be people that are interested in Coach Holbrook sooner than later. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he had some opportunities in the very near future. Uh, what was the conversation like with Coach Myers when you told him he'd, he'd have the interim role? And what responsibilities kind of fall to those assistants during this period? We had, that, we had a lengthy conversation last night. And Coach Myers has been a head coach. He's been here as I mentioned, two different stints. And my message was, although Coach Holbrook's not here today, we move forward. We move forward in a professional way and do the things that we would do normally. It's, it's not a perfect scenario, but the communication is important with our current players and, and the recruits and, and what we're doing. And, and they're professionals, and I, I have the utmost confidence they'll do it the right way. Coach, a two-part question. In the release, Coach said that he felt this decision was best for everyone involved. Was there any context he gave to you of what that meant and its meaning to him? And as you guys celebrated those joys and journeys that you went on in 2010, 2011, the highs and lows, what did it sink in last night when you spoke of the difficulties a little bit earlier, but when the moment hit that his tenure was over? Well, as I mentioned, it, it, it was very difficult. You know, we. Um, we have been colleagues for a long time before we were together here. And you know, through, throughout the assessment, I, I, I cannot speak for him. And he didn't share particularly uh, what he shared in the release. We didn't get into to detail about that. But I, um, you know, last night before, I have the utmost respect for who he is and what he's done. And, and I don't have any doubt that he'll be very successful moving forward. Ray, have you talked to the team, returning players, and if so, what has that been like? Or did Chad have a chance to talk to them before he left? I, I'm not sure whether Coach Holbrook did or not. I can't answer that question. I had an opportunity to visit with uh, approximately 10 players. You know, they've, they've scattered as the school year has ended. If they're not here 
for internships or summer school. They're out playing and they're gone. So I didn't get a chance to visit with all of them. They were contacted uh, last night, you know, from the assistant coaches. And um, we do exit interviews with our student athletes. And, and so I had a little more conversation than, than maybe a normal exit interview. But uh, as I said before, they were very positive. They're, they're outstanding young men who stand up. And they're very disappointed they didn't get to the postseason. And they took uh, responsibility for that, which I didn't ask them to do that. But that's, that's where it lies. And uh, we're, ver we're very complimentary um, toward Coach Holbrook and their experience in this program. Ray, you, you obviously know this team really well. With, with what's likely coming back next year and the players that he's already recruited and signed, what kind of shape is the team in next year for the new coach as far as being successful right away. You're giving me too much credit for knowing the personnel. I, you know, I try to see all of our sports play, and I try to see as many games as, as I can. seems like this administration thing takes me to a lot of meetings where I miss too many events. But uh, I, I know that the, a bulk of the position players are going to be back. There's a couple that could be drafted and choose to leave or not, according to their draft status. There's going to be some departures on the pitching staff and some innings that are gone there. but. Um, I know I know what Jerry Myers has done in the past, you know, with teams that maybe didn't bring back a lot of experience. Whether or not he has his fingerprints on that remains to be seen. Uh, but I feel like there's some guys that that could step up, and some young guys that didn't get an opportunity to pitch because of the guys that were, were ahead of them. But uh, I, I think that you know, we'll be a very a very competitive team. It's a difficult league, as you guys know. Well, we got six teams. Uh, in the Super Regional, so it, it speaks volumes about a level of play in the Southeastern Conference. Just going back to the end and the resignation, did you try to talk him out of it at all when he offered up his resignation? You're not going to stop, are you? <laughs> let's, uh, let's go back to the release. Uh, well, no, you, I get I You're get. giving me a hypothetical situation. No, no, no. There was it's an not assessment. Hypothetical. It was and, not hypothetical. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to your the. Your release said he resigned. Correct. So my question is, did you try to talk him out of it? I will share with you that we've had numerous conversations um, concerning the assessment of this program, and I will not share any of that with you. As far as salary and being competitive, if, if it meant needing to pay near the top of the SEC to get your guy, would you be willing to do that? What is that number, Matt? Well, wow. Um, I, you know, the only thing I can say, I mean, again, it's, it's a, way early in the process. But, you know, it's important. It's important that we're, we're in the marketplace. I think that you can look at our coaches today across the board, and, and we're pretty close in all of our situations. And, uh, if those are the numbers in baseball that, that we're dealing with based on experience and, and, and uh, their resume, then um, I, I could tell you that's a possibility. Ray, will any of the uh, current assistants have a chance to be interviewed for, the, for this job the way Sean Elliott maybe was when you were searching for a football coach? I would, I would uh, certainly hope. I can't speak to that particularly accurately at this point, but I would hope who's ever hired would take the time to visit with our coaches. It may or may not be the case. You know, and a lot of times coaches bring their staff with them. And what about that being head coach? That's, like candidates to be head coach if considered for head coach. Like your assistants currently, would they have a chance to interview for the head job? Here. Here. No, there, there will not be candidates. Sorry, I misunderstood that. All right, thank you guys. I appreciate you being here today, and and I, as Steve said, I, I hope that we'll have a chance to to get together um, in due time to uh, to move the program forward with a new head coach. Thank you.